Hello, hello, uh, my Jack, one, two, one, two, to Legit City on the mic, yo, what's going on, everybody, how y'all doing today? To Legit City here, today we're back, guys, back into the Green Mamba, and of course, we're gonna be looking to beat the game today. Gonna be uh, setting up the Tear Breacher, opening it up, sending a rocket through, wrapping up our last artifacts. So, looking to do all that today. Gotta get Mamba in the shot. And of course, I don't know how long it's gonna take because we haven't even set up the tear opener and then we have to charge it up. And then I do need to bring Uranium. So we have a lot we're gonna have to do. Hopefully we have enough time. I'm pretty sure we will. And we have a lot of food as well. So we're not too worried about uh, making sure the calories are up we at four mil that's way more than enough we're actually fine starting to stockpile a lot of uh liquids as well pretty good even though they're half drowning all the time all right all right so we don't really have to do that much more right we never got to the bottom because we didn't need to. We still have salt water in the cool slush box. It's kind of insane. It's uh, maintained pretty well. There's a little bit of gas for us to take care of right here. We could if we want. Might as well. Just start pumping up the extra gas. The O2 should be pressurized and I don't mind if it's not. It's actually not. Oh, uh, a lot of oxygen right here. We could just release. And if we don't release that, I guess we don't mind releasing a little bit of oxygen from there. All right. So how much is in here? 12 kilograms. Let's release that. Oh, look at that. Just push out. Sweet, sweet O2. <laughs> Gotta have the strats. Alright, so we can let this fill up again. This is at 100 kilograms. We're just gonna let that spread. That's probably not gonna spread that much. Let's actually release them into here. That's pretty good. Seventy nine kilograms. All right, hopefully that's enough oxygen. We'll need to release. Look at that spread, though. So beautiful. Still at double digits. Let's go down to single digits on the back tiles. There we go. Make close it. All right. So are there any rockets in space? We have one coming back. And not holding anything so this is our only artifact rocket okay so there's nothing here and we have how many more artifacts do we need to grab nine and ten don't we have the terrestrial artifacts none wait a second is it in here no it's in my other art oh, okay it's in here yeah, so we have the sink and we have the strange brick. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. So we're going to get two from that. We got Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow. Uh, we're full rocket. Yeah, so we need to grab one space one. So we could go to over here or we could go to the that one. Let me see this though. Oh, this one's already collected. Oh, we go to the Glimmering Asteroid Field. We can't get Russell's Teapot, actually. It's too far. We need a Hydrogen Rocket for that. <laughs> I could go to the edge right here and make it back. But if I go to Russell's Teapot, I end up like on this tile. One of these two tiles further away. When you hover over the cycle count, how long have you been playing? This has only been 72 hours. Not too bad. Uh, probably with today. We'll get close to 80. But we'll see. 
the fantastic Loki. Welcome on in, man. Hope you're a fan of the Oxygen Uncluded. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to help out. Did I grab all of these already? I feel like I shouldn't go here because I've been there before. Oh, we're going to go to the Helium Cloud. Yeah. So, Helium Cloud. And then crew and launch. We should be good. You have 30 hours on cycle 74. No worries, man. I play... I have over 2,000 hours on this game. So I know exactly what I need to do to get to where I need to get to. So I play on 3x speed. This is real time elapsed. So it's just a difference of uh, what speed you play at. Because I'm a streamer, I try to go through like 75 cycles of stream if I can. So, you know, we play on 3x speed. We're just uh, waiting for the dupes to get the job done. <laughs> but it could also be tied to uh, how many dupes you have. Because you get more done if you have a, a larger colony. So even though I'm at 16 right now, I would be better off with 24 dupes because there's times where I'm building something like, uh, you know, the monument or I'm harvesting resources or I'm setting a mining job and it just takes forever. And honestly, I probably would have finished a couple hundred cycles earlier if I had more duplicates, just because a lot of it is I need to wait for them to build something and it's tough. How would you say I should go about making salt gas for steam reactor in the early game? Because I'm producing a bit of steel now. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Salt gas? We're not salt gas. So you're talking about the steam turbine, right? Right here? Salt gas is an actual element, if you didn't know. And that becomes gas at like three, four thousand degrees. I think you're talking about steam, right? Steam? I need to understand what... No, you mean salt gas. So salt gas. So you're using salt gas. Okay, so it's 1400. That's not that bad. Yes, if you use salt gas, you can 3x its output per DTU. So what are you trying to do? How are you using this with the steam reactor? What are you talking about, man? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, man. So, so what are you trying to do? I'm, I'm hearing steam reactor. I'm assuming it's it's the steam turbine, but I don't know if that's what you're talking about. There's also a steam engine for the rocket, which is also something that uses steam, but not salt gas. So I, I don't understand what you're asking. Because technically I could build a steam engine as well. What's a steam reactor? How does salt gas help that out? If you're looking, basically it's phase change reactor. Once you get it to the right temp, it takes way less to sustain the salt gas temp, which transfers into tungsten tiles to heat up water. So you're saying the difference between salt liquid, which is 0 0.7, 0 0.44, the salt gas, which is 0.8 and 0.44. Wouldn't you better off be doing that with ethanol, which is at a lower temperature? Because technically ethanol liquid has the same uh, properties. Ethanol liquid, 74 degrees to become gas. And then you have 2.46, 171. And then if you go into liquid or go to gas, 2.14 and 0.167. Isn't that better? I don't know. Because technically, if you're doing a, a state change reactor, the popular element is ethanol. Because it's a lot lower as well for heat deletion. 
but technically it does have a higher SHC, so it's harder to kind of do its thing. Is that what you're doing? You're, you're trying to get a little bit of heat deletion? Basically that, and I want to make a finished product. What is that video? It's a salt reactor. Oh, wow. Honestly? Uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but... It seems like it's the same thing as the ethanol design. What's going on, Uglervis? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good days today. Hope you're having a good Tuesdays. So, so what are you trying to do? You're trying to find a way to heat up salt into liquid salt into salt gas. If you're just trying to go for heat, uh, the, the easy question is, do you want to use it in a pipeline or do you want to use it from the magma? So there's there's a lot of different ways you could induce the heat. You could keep the heat in a pipe if you can pump it. And there's there's some methods that you could use. Or you could have the salt drop on a tile, you know, that's touching magma on the other side and have that melt that way. So which way do you which way are you looking for? Like how do you want to introduce the heat? There's a lot of ways to do that. So it just depends on the method you choose. I have geodes that are about 2000 in temp, but I'm on a 512 height map and I am nowhere near magma at the moment. So you don't want to use magma. How, but how do you want to heat up your salt? Do you want it to have it in a room and then it just becomes, you know, gas and then you have a heat sink at one side and a heat source coming from the other? Do you want to run the salt in a like uh with radiant piping going over it like like how do you want to do it there's there's a lot of different methods i will say this the method you're probably looking for is the glass method if you haven't seen it yet this is this is what you would use the glass forge in order to do what you're talking about. Because what you're looking for is a liquid medium to melt it. And the easiest way to do that is with the glass forge. Because what you would want to do is run your glass forge and instead of outputting your molten glass, you could have that run through as a heat source. Now the problem is, is that if you solidify the glass in the pipes, it breaks. <laughs> but this is probably what you're looking for. Getting liquid glass from the glass forge and then using that through a metal refinery. If you've never done that method before, that is the old school vanilla method for melting items. People used to take uh, the glass forge and have it pipe into a metal refinery. Right? And they would pipe the output of the glass forge directly into the metal refinery. That allows you to heat up the glass more so that you could start absorbing the heat. So people would do that, get the liquid glass, push it closer to 2200, and then use that to melt things. Now the problem with that is, is that you technically need insulation or ceramic minimum. The problem with ceramic is that it melts. So you can't push it that high of a temperature with ceramic. So although ceramic works, you can't push it to over 2K, but it is going to handle the molten glass at 1400 though. So you would probably push it up to around 1750 and then use that to run over your salt and then melt that. But that's, that's the old school strat. That's probably what you're looking for because you're always going to have sand, right? You could rock crush any of the raw minerals into sand and then you can make that in the glass. And then it's a stable source of heat, technically. 
as long as you're making steel, which adds the most amount of heat and DTUs on that liquid. And then the only thing you're worried about is keeping the heat in the pipes. Whoa, wait, wait. 2.5k Fahrenheit? This is, this is Celsius. <laughs> this is Celsius. I need the mod to show both temperatures, man. 2.5k Fahrenheit is not that hot, right? Compared to Celsius. Uh, 1400 C to F. Yeah, my glass forge is uh, more than that already. So 1400 is 2552 Fahrenheit. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the mod to show both. There's a mod that shows both temperatures, Fahrenheit and Celsius, and then you have the option to also show Kelvin. So you show three different temperatures. There's a mod that used to do that in the vanilla game. I used to play with it. And it would show basically, I, I know you go into in-game and flip it around, but you could show them simultaneously so that people who are watching, you know, don't have to do conversions and they could see the temperature a little bit better. But yeah, 1400 C is 2552 Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit, and then you could push that up too. Oh, you show both without the mod? Was that added in? Hmm, I could show only one. Alright, because you could only choose the one box at a time. Face for radio, is there, is there an option I'm missing, man? Because I had it disabled because the other temps were messed up. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So, fantastic Loki. Your glass forge is just as hot as your geode. And this is something you could tap into at any time. As long as you have the 1200 watts of power. I, I don't remember because uh, I had my hard drive corrupt and all of my mods I used to use are gone. I had to re-download everything. That happened like... 8 months ago. But uh, that's probably it. Hope that helps. Fantastic Loki. And of course, Face for Radio. Hope you're having a nice day today. Hope you're doing good. Alright, so we're sending this guy out to grab an artifact. And then we're going to come back. I will probably grab this one as well. On the Gilded Asteroids field. And then we'll head back. And then... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add more water. Because why not? You never know, man. We might not have enough water. <laughs> multi switches are swag. What's a multi switch? What the better option is? Just use Celsius like a normal person. <laughs> I mean, I I use Celsius. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm learning about the normal temperatures in a Celsius temperature range. Hey man, a lot of people used to give me shit when I used to play RimWorld Face for Radio. When, uh, it's because the bulk of my community is non American. At least the people that come out and hang out and chat. A lot of them tend to be somewhere outside of America, whether it's Canada, you know, somewhere in, you know, Southeast Asia, in Europe, uh, anywhere, Eastern Europe. And they used to give me shit all the time when I used to play RimWorld in Fahrenheit. <laughs> so I played RimWorld in Fahrenheit. They'd be like, dude, what temperature is that? Can you switch it to Celsius? I'm like, I'm American. I don't know Celsius. So one of the things was one of the homies from the community got me this game. Oxygen not included. And they're, you know, not American. So I was like, you know what? Just for them, I will play this game from the beginning as celsius and i won't change that way i'll learn and yep i learned i'm happy i know more about uh celsius now and it's more like normal for me now which was awesome not gonna lie that was an awesome experience oh fantastic loki you got bodied buddy hey man if you need to post a link let me know uh, if it's not a YouTube or Twitch link, Nightbot's gonna, you know, he's he's not a fan of the malicious links. So, uh, let me know if you need to post something. Otherwise, uh, Nightbot's gonna slap you. 
Very sorry about that. I can't control the nightbots. The robots are taking over. I used Fahrenheit for everything until I played Oni for a few weeks. Dude, man, me too. Me too. Oni changed my uh, unit conversions. <laughs> I want to say that's a good thing though, right? I want to say that's a good thing. Alright, alright. So, what we need to do now is we're going to release some more water. And we're going to release some toilet water. Because I don't want my toilets to max out. That's going to go into here. And then this is going to feed into my liquid cargo tank. I probably don't need more than 15,000. Uh, 15, because I only need, what, 5,000 times 3. So 15, yeah. And then I need to start packing up my materials. So we have a little bit... No, that was building the tiles, right? Yeah, the plastic is whatever. We have suits to live. We have food so that we could chill out. We have a bathroom set up, mess hall, barracks. I, I I think we decided that we didn't need sleeping arrangements, right? <laughs> we do not need sleeping arrangements anymore. So because of that, we're not going to be having two beds. We're just going to have one. Feels bad for the people that are uh, not going to be able to sleep. So we have mafic rock. That's going to be our mineral of choice for building tiles. We're going to have five tons of refined aluminum. That's going to be our refined metal. And then five tons of copper. I think I'm going to need more metal ore. So let's see what we have to select from. I have like no options, man. All right, it looks like I should start breaking some iron, but I'm using that to make steel. I guess we don't need that much steel anymore. Take the sands. Uh, technically there's iron here. So you know what? We'll grab some iron. Why not? All right. So we will drop the copper, come in with iron and we'll come in at 10,000. All right. So with that, I'll mine some iron. We'll find some iron somewhere and start mining it, which is probably going to be here. Kind of weird. Not really. All right, let's mine that out. And then speed this up. There is some iron in the bottom, which is why I'm willing to take it. If anything, we could just mine straight down and start grabbing it. All right, all right. So... We will be chilling out for a bit until the dupes start filling out the iron ore to the top. I probably want to mop this up. And then mop that as well. And then we'll start mining this down. Get all the iron from this chunk. So today we're looking to beat the game, guys. We completed the monument objective, as you guys could see. We got the great monument. And we got the home sweet home done. We got to open the tear. We got to breach the tear. Those are two steps that we'll have to do today. And we're still waiting for the artifacts to get back home. Yo, are we out of water? We actually out of water. All right, let's release a little bit more. I'm looking forward to the flipped run. Max difficulty flipped asteroid. It's going to be interesting to say the least. I hope I don't get shafted with bad water placement. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about, man. I'm worried about getting shafted with bad water placement. I hope that doesn't happen. Flip this fun. I'm looking... F I, 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 uh... I'm curious to see how much more difficult max difficulty is. I might have to make that the new norm. Only max difficulty runs. What the hell? How come they're not harvesting my lumber? That's weird, man. Flip is going to be a uh, fun time, hopefully. Uh, 
Oh, we're filled with CO2. Feels bad. Does no one soda found? Oh, they have enough. So they don't have to grab from here. Feels bad, man. We have all this gas and we can't tap into it. Alright, so we might as well get the rest of the people some clothes. I'm gonna get a purple polyester. And I don't know if someone has a red suit. We'll get one. I think Cthulhu has a green one. And then there's a purple suit. And then I think we're gonna get the spiffy overalls. I gotta give some people some nice clothes, man. Slicksters to do in our right. I actually didn't need oil, man, that often. We Slicksters are actually providing enough. And uh, it was not bad, ratching these guys. It's just that we didn't maximize how much we actually uh, wanted to get from them. We did realize, though, that the ethanol distillers running is enough CO2 for the uh, Slicksters. To the point where I don't even need to provide CO2 from the petroleum gens. It's not bad, it's not bad. Also, on the flipped asteroid run, I probably don't have the option to delete my water. As this is typically something they only allow you to do in uh, the earlier playthroughs, if that makes sense. Typically, they tend to not give you that much water sources on the more difficult runs. I'm slowly scaling out my molten farm just for fun, the molten slicks. I see you over there, Uglar Visk. How are you heating them up? Are you using... Do you have an oil well? Or a uh, leaky oil fissure? Those are really good for the molten babies. Because of the heat? Two seventy uh, seventy five, and it's uh, ninety to two fifty. I was gonna suggest another restriction. Oh, no door crushing. Why? What's wrong with door crushing? Door crushing is cool, dude. How convenient is this? I just crush the 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 waters. Heat injector and temp sensor for control. I see you, man. I see you. Uglarvis with the more advanced builds. Dude, what's wrong with door crushing? It's not that illegal, is it? What's wrong with... with dude, door crushing is cool. It's not cheating. What do you mean? How am I going to maintain my gases now? Is it because I don't have a space biome? And then it's like I have to actually store the gas. Hey, man. No door crushing just means more infinite storage. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no door crushing just means more infinite storage. And it's just going to sit there, man. I mean, I guess I'm cool with it. I'm just going to make a lot of, you know, these boxes now. <laughs> I remember making a super long pipe just to vent stuff into space. I mean, I still build it, though. I have a long pipe from the bottom. Just to vent gas, there used to be CO2 release, now it's oxygen that I'm still releasing. What's going on Glycerin? How are you? This is my first check on this playthrough. What is your primary power source? Oh, ethanol. We're running uh, ethanol, as you can see in the pipelines, into our petroleum generators. We are using our lumber farm right here with the pips, and we are supplying wood to the ethanol distillers right here. The ethanol distillers then generate ethanol and then it produces go to the generators and then that's our power source this connects to our industrial brick where we have our meta refinery glass forge kiln you know rock crushers aqua tuners in here and this is where our transformers are so that we could distribute the power but yeah very simple very simple setup Gotta keep crushing ceramic, man. Boss, I haven't done much with ethanol. It looks fun. Yeah, one of the things people don't realize is that if you go to the power generators, you have the petroleum generator. A lot of people just read the name of the generator and assume that it's only for petroleum. But if you actually read it, 
it goes converts either petroleum or ethanol into electrical power. So you have the option of using ethanol liquid. It's not bad, but the problem is is that uh, it's a lot of CO2. The ethanol distillers generate 166 grams per second, and the petroleum generators generate 500 grams per second. It's a lot of CO2. If you actually don't box up your ethanol, you end up getting a heat source with ethanol distillers, and it will flood your map with carbon dioxide. So it's a interesting uh, process loop because you got to get a lot of trees. I'm wild planting them with pips. You could, you know, choose to grow them yourself as well. And then you have options that um, if you if you're curious, if you didn't know the grub grubs right here or sweetles, the beetles right there, there's a uh, rub buff that they do, right? That increases growth speed, right? Growth speed plus 5%, growth speed plus 50%. They could actually rub the arbor acorn tree and increase the growth speed of the wood now you might notice that i'm not doing that that's because they actually hug the individual branches so that's a lot of plants they're gonna have to rub <laughs> so that is an option and the good thing about this is that you're gonna get a lot of dirt from the pips eating and also a lot of polluted dirt from the ethanol distillers you also get polluted water from the petroleum gen. So technically you have a water source and an oxygen source. Over here, I convert the polluted dirt into polluted oxygen right here. And we convert that into oxygen up top. Look at that. We're using a uh, layer of deodorizers right here. And since they're constantly deodorizing, we get free oxygen. And I release it via the door right here. I could choose to also pump. I disconnected the power the oxygen into my suits as well so it's a pretty nice loop to be honest i need to start sweeping the dirt though because they're not doing that we have 2000 kilograms right there that needs to go into the box how come oh i unchecked manual use oh my god no wonder we weren't getting dirt anymore i was wondering what's going on i was like how am i not generating as much oxygen we forgot to allow the dupes to deliver the dirt. Feels bad, man. Spell more what's good. Hope you're having a nice Tuesday, dude. But yeah, ethanol is fun. I would recommend it if you haven't at least done it one time. It's also great on a map that gives you... Uh, you probably don't notice this. But I had rust biomes on this map. I mined them all out because uh, rust biomes tend to have pools of cold ethanol. So it's a great like early game cooling. And then once it's cooled down enough of the area, you can just burn it as fuel. It's pretty nice. I love the industrial brick to contain the heat. I love to see your save file to see how you're doing this. Oh, you could check out my YouTube channel. We have the VOD of the entire playthrough of this colony from beginning to end. You could see all the steps. And then we also talk about the things we do if the people ask the questions. So you can check it out, man. good how about you we do it all right we're doing all right we are trying to you know not sweat as much but i'm already sweating <laughs> it's getting warm man it really is oh we got back nice this guy's back home new subscriber now yep we have our playthrough for this one we also have our previous playthrough where we did all achievements so not on this playthrough but on another one, we did all achievements in the same colony. This one, we were just trying to do ethanol based and then do all the achievements. And then the next playthrough we're going to be doing is going to be a max difficulty flipped asteroid run. So we're going to have those playthroughs on there, man. Hopefully you enjoy. Hopefully you find exactly all you need, Glycerin. But uh, if there's any specific questions, feel free to ask. I'd be happy to help. The flipped asteroid. So on the bottom of the map, you can kind of see right here. There's magma, right? So that's typically at the bottom of every map. Uh, sometimes, depending on your map modifiers, like if I go on this, you see small boulders, metallic caves, and slime molds. One of the modifiers is a modified core. So a frozen core, forest core, things like that. And I think I have one of those. 
Yeah, Lush Core. So instead of Magma Core, there's a Force at the bottom. This one has a radioactive core. So it's frozen at the bottom and it's uh, a lot of radiation. Ours is a magma core with a magma at the bottom. So the flipped asteroid flips the magma that's supposed to be at the bottom and moves it to the top. So you're going to have instead of right here, the cold energy, the minus 65 igneous, you're going to have a giant pool of magma on the top instead. So that's to stop you from getting out into space so that you can't, you know, proceed with some of the research tax that you have to do that requires, you know, orbital data bank. Wouldn't that space extremely hard? Yep. It's one, I think it's the second hardest difficulty of all the asteroid starts in the game. It's, it's really for the advanced players. But uh, yeah, we're going to be trying to attempt that. And that's going to be our next playthrough. So we'll see if it actually, you know, makes it that bad on us. And uh, what's hardest? So in the game, when you first start it off, you have something called a slider for difficulty. We normally play on the normal settings, but the max difficulty settings are uh, increase all the stats of a dupe. So they generate stress two times harder. The uh, I think they're breathing costs more oxygen they need to eat more calories uh to stay full i think they get uh higher penalties from the core and stress so it just makes the game overall harder uh you could imagine it as doubling up some of the values that are bad so like you know bladder generation breeds more oxygen uh eats more calories and you know we have to manage the stress a little bit more in that case so because of that, that's the max difficulty slider we're going to be attempting for the first time. And I really haven't tried it before, so I might be wrong with some of the things. Damn, Spellmore, aren't you a rude bastard? I was talking to you, and you lurk mid-conversation. Been meaning to ask, what are you doing to produce slime? Just from shells from your Paku and farm? I actually went to the water asteroid. <laughs> I went to the water asteroid. And what I did was I went to the bottom of the map and I mined the lime from here. So because I did that, I I, I don't run out of lime. <laughs> so if you ever really need a lot of lime, you could always go to the water asteroid because the bottom of the map has a lot of actual mineable lime, which is insane because of the amount you could actually mine and just bring home. And then there's also fossil if you run out of that. You could bring the fossil home and start crushing it for more lime as well. And of course there's graphite. If you want to make uh, you know, fullerene. But uh yeah, water asteroid. Outside of that, I was using the uh Dreco eggs and the uh, pokey shells. I don't have that many. And also some of the hatches. All of the eggshells we get from them do become lime as we have it, uh, you know, crushing at the moment. Oh man, I've been avoiding that asteroid like the plague. It's not a bad time. If you want a good tip for it, phase for radio, I could give you an easy way to conquer it. Wow, nice. I've been using a series of Pokeshell ranches. I mean, that works. Nothing wrong with that. If you get Pocku too, they're really good for that since they have a shorter lifespan and then you just get the lime from the eggs. And then you get Pakus eight at a time from the printing pod. So if you can start a Paku branch, that's the smart thing to do. It's a good food source, get in a lot of lime pretty easily. They have a low cycle count for the life. So just overall, you know, a plus plus. But if you really want face for radio, all you need to do is have a rocket that could do a round trip. So I could travel 20 tiles my rocket so that I could go from here to here and back. That's a round trip and send two rovers modules doesn't matter what it's made out of you just need two rovers and what you could do with that is drop them both off at the top that's what i did and then i mine off the top layer for sandstone as you can see right there i mined a little bit and then i uh, mined through and i built a ladder with the rovers after you do that you could set up a storage bin on the top and you could start mining out some of the items with the rovers. 
And what you could get is have the rovers pick up the lime and deliver it to the top for you. That way, when your rocket launch, uh, launches and lands here, you could just load up and leave. Hey, Restiv, thank you so much for the follow. Thank you so much for the Prime. What a legend. He subscribed with Prime before following. <laughs> thank you so much. Enjoy the emotes, D20 dice, and tree viewing. Don't forget that legit sub badge. But I see you over there, Restiv. Thank you so much for using your Prime on me. Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow, I see you over there, man. You know what, Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow? If you really want VIP, I will give you a surefire way to get it. And it's going to be a channel point redemption. Permanent VIP. That way, once you have it accumulated, you could afford it. And it's, it's, it's not that bad. And then it's like, no arguments there. Eventually, we're going to have VIP only things like uh, commands and stuff. And there's actually two VIPs right now. Just old mods. But uh, yeah, I thought about it. And I was like, hey, I might as well release this function now. So if you're curious and if you really, really want it, we could have it there. But yo, rest of man, appreciate the support. Thank you so much. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to help. Oh yeah, face for radio. But uh, the one problem with the water asteroid, your rovers cannot mine anything that requires a skill. So both fossil and lime require tier one digging. The trick around that is you could mine out the igneous rock and then if you could allow water on both sides of a tile or have it be hollow on the inside. So let's say that you have a corner tile like, like this, right? You could actually try to mine that out and then hope that the water pressure could break it. Because since you're in the water asteroid, you could use the water to your advantage. Since you're going to have high water pressure per tile, you could mine out the igneous and let the water pressure mine it out for you. And then have your rovers, since they could breathe underwater, just climb up the ladders and slowly deliver to the top. That's a very easy strat to do. And that's something I would recommend. Oh, dude, look at this rock asteroid. <laughs> look at this salt, dude. Oh my god. That's a lot of salt. That's actually not that much. Feels bad, man. Okay, so did we get the two artifacts analyzed? Yes, we did. We have the terrestrial ones now. So this guy is... He's in. He got the artifact, the shield generator. Nice. I don't think I have that yet. I'll grab this one as well from over here. Yeah, I, that's actually what I did when uh, I set my rovers over. Everything I just explained to you was exactly how I did my uh mining for this area we use water pressure to break the gap right here as this was a uh either mineable with igneous rock or the water pressure was able to destroy it and after that we get to the bottom and grab the artifacts <laughs> once we did that i was like okay we have enough lime here and then uh you know grab the artifacts and run it was nice I've never intentionally used water pressure to destroy anything. It's usually unintentional. Yeah, that's that's why the water asteroid here is it's really nice. You get to use all the things you learn that you learned accidentally to your advantage. Everyone learns that water pressure and water tanks should be of a certain size because of uh, how the water pressure works. But yo, man, this is just a large water tank. All we got to do is start breaking some tiles. But yeah, ladders in, rovers could breathe underwater. It's a nice time. If they ever patch it so that if rovers touch water, they like malfunction, I would be kind of mad, to be honest. <laughs> I use this word as a big Paku tank, Ugler Vis Man. Are you lagging in your playthrough? Because <laughs> that's how you lose FPS, man. Holy crap, you know how big that is? And your Pock who's able to swim on all these tiles, that's impressive. That's actually impressive. 
Because it's like, I'm clicking on this Paku. I'm like, ah, that's not that bad. You put it on the water world. Oh, God. 2 FPS. Playing Oni at 2 FPS, man. Big lags right there. JK, I see Algarvis. I thought you had a supercomputer from NASA. Mining Bitcoin while uh, playing Oni with 0 FPS. My Paku either all swim on one tile or they don't swim at all. You don't feel this bad, man. You gotta give them space. We were over here a part of the Humane Society. We had to give them some room. I say that, man. And then we got we got grub grubs in negative 20 temperatures. That's not in their comfortable range at all. <laughs> I say that, man. I got my grub grubs right here. Ice cold. Hey, man. We, we need it for the sleet wheat, though. They rubbing it. I did, however, put everyone into a citrus spandex suit, like lab workers. Oh, that reminds me. Oh, no one made the suits that I wanted. This is max priority. I needed to do that. Well, I wanted to do that. I think I have some dupes that don't have uh, clothing. Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow with the uh, Christmas sweater with the Christmas lights on it. We got the citrus spandex. Purple suit. The nicer purple suit. Blue suit, pink unitard, we got the confetti outfit, we got the overalls, is there anyone, okay, there we go, Silent One, Slayer, Spellborn, Tannin, and then there's Ghost Rider and Uglarvis, okay, so I need four outfits, there's one more I need to grab, I'm gonna get, I don't, I don't remember someone wearing the green suit, was it, wasn't that supposed to be Cthulhu? Hey Cthulhu, man! Didn't you didn't you have the green suit? No, you had the blue one. Purple, blue. Wait a second. Purple, blue. We don't have red or green. All right, we're getting a red and a green suit. Red, green. There we go. Crystal hat. Wait, crystal golem. Uh, that's 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 the nice suit. That's the purple polyester, not the snazzier one. We got we had to give them all the nice outfits, man. Only way we could we could see them off. All right, is the rocket ready? Did we finish the deliveries? Oh wow, they finished it. Ten tons, and we have five tons there. All right, cool. Uh, so now we're still sending out the water. Uh, we should be fine. How much is this at? 15, it's almost 16 kilograms. Uh, this is fully charged. And I think we have food inside, right? 15, 14 point X kilograms, yeah. I think then we're good. I think that we're good then. I don't think there's anything we need. Oh, you know what we don't have? I don't have oxygen. That's what we don't have. That's right. Uh, I do have a hamster wheel in here, right? So I could get rid of the solar panel. Because technically, we don't need to charge anything. The only thing we need is to have the water output. Okay, so we have 6.6 .6 kilograms. We have one, two, three suits. We could bring three more and then charge it because the suit docks could charge the suit twice. And then that would mean that I would have enough oxygen for nine cycles for one dupe so it's what four and a half cycles for two dupes okay so we'll drop the mafic sweep only and then we'll put clothing here some extra apple suits we'll have three and there doesn't really matter it's sweep only all right so we got to make some extra suits we have three suits right there. I don't know if they're actually supposed to be. <laughs> Alright, sweep the suits. 
these are fully equipped suits, which is nice. And then I would want to take... We're going to make six suits. Actually, we should only need to take three more. I'll make three more. All right, so we're going to make some extra suits so that we could have the crew that we go on without oxygen be okay. How much is the oxygen canister? I have one tile of space. Oxygen tank is three tiles tall. So I basically need to downsize from the large liquid cargo into the smaller one. And then I would have enough space with taking out the solar panel. Technically, that's fine. There's not a lot of light on the asteroid anyways. 10,000 lux. Always garbage. Alright, these guys are okay right now. Nice. Okay, so we should be able to go back exactly 10 out of 10 tiles. Perfect. That's going to take 5 cycles for them to come back. That's not bad. And we're just going to be waiting for the suits. Wow, that was fast. We got three suits already. Could make some oxalite. Oh, that's true. And just put it inside and pump it out. I did not even think about that. I would have to get rid of the cot to put a gas pump. <laughs> that's such a meme, but it would work. Wait, I don't have gold. Oh, crap. And I don't have puffs. I would have to go to the asteroid over here to grab gold first. Because this is where my gold is. Outside of this area, I don't have gold, though. That's a lot of gold. Y'all see this? That's a lot of gold, though. All the gold amalgam. Why do you need a pump? Just put the oxide there and you go, no, 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 oxygen for the suits. Because they're going to have to work in the area right here with no oxygen. Right? So I need them to have oxygen chargeable. So I could fill up the suit dock with new suits and then they could just charge that. And I need to fill up the suit dock with oxygen. That's what I'm trying to do. Not so that they could breathe inside. We're fine with that. Right, because we got to go out and start building the setup. Building the coal reactors, I mean, coal gens, so that we have everything we need. And then we're going to have to have the reactor right here. I think we'll be fine, though. I think we'll be fine. Alright, so... We'll wait for the three extra suits, which we got. Oh, that was fast. Snaz your red suit. We're going to give this a silent. The second purple polyester is kind of nice, though. I want to give them the other one that we don't have yet, though. Nice. What's the liquid tank for? Uh, research reactor needs water. Otherwise, the reactor melts down. <laughs> that's all that's for. And I want to bring more water because I remember what happened last time. You remember what happened, Cthulhu, on the last playthrough? I didn't bring enough water. So we went back home to bring another rocket with new water in it. And we didn't make it in time. And the reactor kind of blew up. <laughs> that happened last time, right? So uh, we learned from our mistakes. We're trying to make sure that, uh, you know, it does well. Oh, well, I thought you were done. There it is. And tan it. You get the overalls. Nice. Everyone in the colony has an upgraded outfit. Good stuff, boys. We're in. Gotta have the nice clothing, boys. Gotta have it. So now that we added in new P-Dirt, the pressure is a little bit more maintained now. 1800. And we're deodorizing constantly. So I think we're doing alright. Yeah, it's constantly at max gas pressure. And then this gets to off gas by itself. It's doing pretty good. It's doing pretty good. Alright, so did we get the extra suits inside? 
Yes, we did. Okay, so we could start. We don't need a checkpoint for this. We're going to manually add the suits in. Oh, none of these suits have oxygen. Oh, that's a bad thing. Uh, let me uncheck this. <laughs> and let me actually dock up all the suits really quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> that's not a good thing. The suits didn't have oxygen, so I need to actually change that really quick. Alright, so this is not swept, but I do want to put new Atlas suits inside. We're not sweeping this, right? No. They're just going to pull from the inside of the rocket to charge it up. Feels bad, man. Oh, nice. We have some nice oxygen, though. We got to release some oxygen into the uh, ambient space. Not bad, not bad. Look at that oxygen just push out. Easy does it. Alright. So, four more suits. I'm waiting for the dupes. Come on, come on. That's one of them. Got two more to go. One more to go. The last suit. Once we get that done, we'll charge them up and then we could restock them back. So what we're doing right now is the suits that we delivered earlier didn't have oxygen inside. So right now we're just preemptively charging all the suits so that we have oxygen inside and then we could undock them and bring them with us. That way we'll have more oxygen, technically. There we go. Okay, so... This is at 100%. This is at 100%. This is at 100%. 100%. 100%. Aw, oh, that's rude. He just took one of my suits. This is at 48. This is at 100 96. We'll take the 96. Okay, so now we will sweep all of these. I have to manually sweep it. It feels bad. And they should take it to the top, where my rocket is. Oh, please don't deliver to there. That, that, that might actually happen. Please don't deliver to right here. So yeah, liquid tank is for the research reactor. Don't want to have a meltdown like my last playthrough. So we're bringing more water than necessary. I think my last playthrough, I brought a filled up small liquid tank and it wasn't enough. So I'm thinking that we're going to have to have the large this time. Of course, the large is like four times the volume. So I don't need to max it out. Two more, two more. New printables. Oh, Paku, how am I going to say no? We put a door there so they can start flopping to the left. Come on, you know where the water is. To the left, to the left. Are you guys really that lost? That you guys can't go this way? There we go. They're starting to notice where the water is. Imagine having an ability like the Paku. You could be flopping on land, but you could sense where the water is. People of Chapman, if you guys could have an ability like the Paku, what would you like to be able to sense? Like, they know where the water is, and they could flop towards it. They got that innate ability, man. Natural instinct. Oh yeah, that's where the water. They sense the agua. They do, man. If you guys had an ability like the Paku, what would you like to be able to sense? 
maybe could be something like always knowing where all the cats are. Kappa. You can meet all the stray cats. <laughs> the kitty whisperer. Oh, they dropped this out here. Come on, man. We got to sweep that. Sense cheese? What? Sense the nearest pub? That could be really useful for traveling, face for radio. You could just be out there. And then out of nowhere, you're like, oh yeah, there's a pub around the corner. Let's go, man. Let's go have a beer. <laughs> I want to sense success. Oh, man. You know what we're going to have you verify, Uglarvis? We're going to put you next to DJ Khaled. That motherfucker says he's suffering from too much success. And you know what, man? We got to verify that. Who the hell says that, you know? Suffering from success. What a guy. Oh, I just had to sneeze. Sorry about that. Good dude, could do all though. Why cheese? I'm curious. I start randomly flopping on the ground. See you guys. I'm gonna grab a beer. <laughs> dude, first thing face for radio is gonna make is a uh, whole side bar counter so that he could flop in the water and grab a beer. <laughs> Poolside bar counter, dude. Only way to do it. So then instead of flopping around, he's swimming majestically. Got his hair all wet. Alright, so we have oxygen. We're good. Alright, it's time to go. Because I like cheese. Guys, what's your favorite cheese? What is your favorite cheese? Cyberdyne and Spellmore. Okay. It's time, boys. What is your favorite cheese in chat? One thing I recently started doing was, uh, well, you know, getting pre sliced cheese is very convenient for making sandwiches, right? Even burgers. But I recently started buying cubed cheese. It's just blocks of cheese. So that, uh, you know, I spend less money. So a lot of the times, I just buy a block of cheese now. One thing I've recently started doing was uh, just cooking up whatever meat I have, deli meat, uh, you know, sausages, whatever. Adding something in like uh, onions. And then just chopping up cheese and then you know cutting it up in small cubes throwing it in the pan put the lid on turn the heat on low and the cheese melts whatever i'm cooking with and then i just pour that on a a, a hoagie roll or a french roll and i have like a cheese steak almost it's really good <laughs> and the cheese of choice for me is monterey jack i love it man it's it's the uh, monterey cheese right but it has like pepper jack. So good. I don't know why. Like the chilies and peppers melting with the cheese just give it this nice flavor, man. So good. Blue cheese. I see over there, Uglar Vist. Do you eat that with your buffalo wings? Provolone is a classic. That's that's what you get on the cheesesteaks, man. Philly cheesesteaks. Provolone's good. I get that at Subway sometimes. Two legit's favorite cheese, door crushing. Hey, man. Why are we going to make that illegal? Face radio, man. Are you on board where we make door crushing illegal, dude? It's so convenient. We just crush it and it and then it's gone. It's it's like it's like the sham wow commercials, dude. You following me, camera guy? You, you gotta hit him with a little bit of the sham wow and the water just disappears. Nah, just eat it straight up. Oh, I see you over there. I've never had Blue cheese, man. I've never had blue cheese. I've never had it before. I don't know how it tastes. I've seen it before. But it's like I've never been one to try it. I don't know why. I prefer Billy Mays. Guys, we over here with flex tape. 
and we're gonna show you guys how to make sure your water tanks never crack from damage because it's, it's so convenient. It's supposed to be a max difficulty run, and you're just gonna delete stuff. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So, so is is the is the uh, the bill that's gonna pass to make things illegal going to be about deleting stuff or just door crushing? Because I could technically still delete stuff in another method. That is convenient. I'm just a hoarder. I save all my things on my maps. See, I used to do that too, face for radio. Until I started playing more of a lag conscious playstyle, where I try to use up all my materials. And deleting stuff is very nice for that, so that I don't have a large entity count. So like, one of the things I'm doing is I'm cooking all my clay that I'm generating from deodorizing my polluted dirt into ceramic and crushing it back into sand. And doing it like that allows me to just get a lot of sand for the deodorizers. So that's a process loop I'm doing just to, you know, reduce the amount of clay I have on my uh, playthrough. <laughs> Crushing minerals too to make it less laggy. Starting to feed uh, seeds to the Paku would be something to do as well. But hoarding is not bad. Hoarding is not bad. I used to do that too. I just want to start getting rid of resources now so that I have a less laggy playthrough. Dude, so much phosphorite from the Drekos. Have some extra clothing, which is fine. Sleet wheat grain, it's the only cooking ingredient. That's not bad. The point is, if you want to delete stuff, you have to get it through lava to space. So, that brings up a good point. Cthulhu, there is a method known as corner building. And I was going to corner build, delete all of the magma that was going to stop me from getting the space. <laughs> so the, the method is we line it up with insulated tiles. And then we either place insulated or airflow tiles here to start pushing the magma in. <laughs> right? So, so are you saying I won't be able to allow to do that? Because as long as I could corner build, I could delete all the magma. That's that's technically above me. That was actually what I was planning on doing. Is that going to be elite? That's too easy? Ah, oh, come on, man. Really? Feels bad, dude. So you want me to actually empty out the magma and then utilize the magma for something? And then that's going to be the method that I need to use to get rid of? said flipped magma asteroid yeah but but technically i could corner build delete everything and that's dealing with it too right all right if that's part of the challenge i think i could do it because if i don't do it that way that just means that i have to use the magma for something like power which i guess is fine Wait, 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 but technically I put all the sliders on max, right? I just happen to know a technique that gets rid of the difficulty part of the asteroid. Right? I'm just saying, man. It's still max difficulty. I just I just got some skills. Right? It's it's like saying, you know, basketball is not hard to play when you're in the NBA. Just look at Michael Jordan. And it's like, well, you gotta... He's Michael Jordan, though, you know? He's one of one. He, not a lot of people could say that. <laughs> right? And he makes it look easy. But, but it's, you know, it's pretty hard. You put a lot of work into it. That's just my opinion. You could do what you want. I see Cthulhu. I could do it. I could do it that way, just for you guys. I wouldn't mind the additional challenge, either. I hope it's not that bad though, you know, once we put it on max difficulty. I uh, want to hope that we could manage that well. Alright, we have 2.2 cycles. Cool, cool. Technically, those sliders only affect the first 100 uh, cycles or so, to be fair. But that's what max difficulty is based off of. Max sliders. Right, right? That's like saying... Uh, 
playing Skyrim on legendary difficulty is easy because the HP uh, difference doesn't matter once you get uh, Daedric armor. <laughs> I don't know, and you just cheese blacksmithing. Is it, well, I'm still playing on legendary difficulty though. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. How come all the oxygen down here is gone? Alright, they're gonna need some help. We should have enough oxygen in the room. And we could release here, right? That's not bad. I right, release there too. Oh, feels bad. We gotta have to pressurize the outside first. All right, all right. Also, guys, people of chat, if there's anything you guys want to ask, if you guys have some issue you guys are running through, we have some time right now while we're waiting for some things to get to where they need to get to. So if you guys have anything you guys need help with, there's a design thing you guys need uh, some insight on. If there's a game property that you guys don't really understand, let me know. It'll be a great time to explain any of all those things right now. If you guys have any questions before we start getting into our reactor build, which is going to start once our uh, rocket gets to the ice asteroid. But until then, we're kind of uh, chilling out for a while. Very stable. We have way too much oxygen in here. We have a lot of hydrogen as well. It's kind of nice. You know what I don't have in any of my playthroughs? That I'm thinking that I should have. I should try to make a hamster wheel gym area for new dupes that's something that i know a lot of people do but i've never really technically done that that's kind of weird to say but i've never done a hamster wheel uh jail a lot of times i'll do something like this we'll just have hamster wheels out and the people could use it when they have time you know but i've never done like a jail and actually like run the power line through like my main power strip and like use that as, as some sort of power generation. That's something to think about. But I was like, eh, maybe we could do that. Maybe we won't. Anyways, though, bathroom water is seemingly fine. We don't need the water from our polluted water vent at the bottom. It's kind of convenient. And then missing tables. Feels bad, man. No questions in chat. All good, all good. So, if that's the case, we're just going to be chilling out for a bit. Uh, let's see. I lock all of my dupes in my base until they have at least 10 athleticism and the suit skill that reduces speed. Oh, that's not bad. So, the suit skill, does that actually reduce speed? Doesn't it reduce wear and tear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They give you athleticism as part of the skill, but it reduces durability damage. Oh no, you get the final tier one. Never mind. The one that reduces the penalty. Damn, dude, that's four point investment. I see you over there. That's that's expensive, man. <laughs> that's expensive. It's worth it, though. That movement speed penalty kind of sucks. I would say that's worth it. The exosuit training. That's not bad. It's not bad. Guys, people of chat, how often do you guys build transit tubes? Because I actually don't have that. <laughs> I actually don't have that. Let's actually build some transit tubes, dude. Why not? Oh, the fire pole's on the side. I can't really use it. Yeah, I hate the new dupes peeing all over the place because they can't make it back to the bathroom. That's true, dude. Every time. What's up with the dupes? They're just peeing everywhere. Yeah, man. The dupes do that from time to time. It's peeing all over the place.
I should probably use the yeah, yeah, yeah. So Haha, okay. I could probably take this line then. Like that. And then we'll take this line to here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I do that. And then I have to do this. And then we'll have it like that. Alright, cool. I usually do mid late game. Dude, I almost never do it. As soon as I have plastic and power for it, I see you both. I've never played Oni, therefore I never build tubes. I see a decent. We have, uh, you know, the people that enjoy the finer things in life in chat, known as Dizen. I see you over there, man. How are you doing? Appreciate you being here, even if you don't play the Onis, man. Dude, Cthulhu gets gets uh, transit tubes. Dude, the thing with transit tubes is, is that it imposes a um, pretty big restriction on you, like, as soon as you could build it. Not a restriction... But I guess the pro proper way to say it is that it imposes a consumption rate that you have to support. That's kind of tough. I build my first tubes when I finally square away my oil biome. The need, uh, need that one from the bottom of my map straight to the solid storage. Oh, I see you. Use that for that. You know, that works. That works. I see you over there. I could see how that's a thing. Damn, am I the only one that doesn't build tubes that often then? I, I often just don't build tubes in general. This is the kind of game where I would rage quit after digging a square I wanted to preserve. It's not for me. I feel you. I feel you. All good, decent. All good, all good. I don't use them either, lol. Thank you, Fantasy Phantom. Got one of the uh, ladder enjoyers in chat, like me. People that enjoy using the ladders. It's a rare breed, man. But it's, uh, we're happy to have you, Fantasy. Sometimes it's all about that life. Wait, wait, did we grab the artifacts? I want my shield generator, and the other one is a model nuclear. Okay. Pronounced nuclear. Nuclear. It's not nuclear, it's nuclear. Am I, have I been pronouncing it wrong my entire life? Feels bad, man. Thanks, Matt. Found you on the YouTubes. Hey, nice. It's good to meet some of the people coming in from the YouTubes. Always welcome, man. Let me know if you have any questions, anything you would like to ask. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the stream, dude. I've done the same thing. I started over and over again until I got it right. Dude, I, that was me, man. In the very beginning, like the first 50 hours of playing this, anytime I peed the tank, I reset. <laughs> Anytime I, I peed into the water source and I made a mess because I didn't build a bathroom fast enough on the first cycle, I immediately reset, man. It took me so long to get through my first 100 cycles. First thing would be like, oh, I don't build a bathroom fast enough. Okay, that's fine. We'll build it cycle one. Second thing is I forget to put it on max priority for cleaning it. And then no one cleans the toilet. And then they make a mess at like cycle 10. And then I'm like, all right, man, I'm kind of pissed. <laughs> I got to reset again. Ah, oh, man, every time. And then sometimes it's bad luck. Someone's mining. He's stuck on a ladder. He doesn't actually get it in time. Boom. He starts uh, making a mess. <laughs> Clear energy. Only way to do it, man. I've done the same thing. I started over and over again until I got it right. Yeah, man. It gets the best of us. I just like starting over. Starting over is not bad. It's it's uh, something about it when you know exactly what it is you need to do. And it feels like, you know, you've learned something or it's easier. Nuclear sounds very North England pronunciation. Nuclear. Oh, that's interesting. I think that's a, bring, that's a cool thing to point out. I never even thought about that, man. North England pronunciation, huh? Guys, who discovered nuclear power? Like, uh, the concept. Because, cause, you know, the person that discovered it, technically, and named it, right? The pronunciation should be from the country. It's like how the word sauna 
and the way we pronounce it doesn't sound like how the Finnish people pronounce it, even though they're the ones that discovered the sauna. Right? Like, like I found that out recently. Like, we're pronouncing sauna wrong or something like that? Oh, it was the Germans? I didn't know that. Then why is it Northern England? That's kind of weird. At least you're not saying a new Keeler. Oh, it was Einstein. Oh, crap. Shout out to Einstein. Not messing around. Oh, are we there? Are we there? Hey, we're there. All right, guys, it's time. So we have the ladder here. Ladder is about to melt. That's fine. And then let's build our setup. First things first, we'll use the copper. And we will have the outlet pipes. So this is going to be outlet from our toilets. That goes into here. And we need that built first. Second thing is we need some additional pipes there for the reactor. And then there's oxygen here, but we don't really need it. So this has space. We don't need to mine that. So one thing we need is... I was thinking about putting the research reactor outside, but then I would have to start cooling down my rad bolt generator. So I think we're going to move it inside instead and have this be... Uh... Oh, I didn't bring gold. That's right. This is going to be interesting. Maybe we put the reactor right here. Let me inspect this. Uh... This kind of this is kind of tough. I would say it's more than one person. Too much involved for one person. Okay, okay. It wasn't someone that stumbled upon the science. Cool, cool. Oh man. You know what? It might be beneficial to have the reactor at the bottom. I'm thinking about it right now. I was originally thinking about having it here, but because it's in the space vacuum, we will just let it melt. But this is such a cold planet that I don't have to worry about that. Okay. So we're going to start mining some snow and the whatnot. Oh, you don't have suits? Hey, we did it, boys. Cosmic archaeology. Oh, we're auto-saving during the cutscene again? Come on, man. The lag is unnecessary. Look at Geek with her coffee mug. Look at Ace Cow's room with the plasma lamp. Look at Cthulhu's room with the useless machine. I see you guys over there, man. Nice. Hey, we did it! Good stuff, good stuff, boys. Two down, one to go. And exploring this corner of the universe, we have found and assembled a collection of artifacts from another civilization. Studying these artifacts can give us a greater understanding of what we are and where we come from. Only by learning about the past can we bring a can we build a brighter future, one where we learn from the mistakes of our predecessors. Yo, man, I gotta learn from history. That's why we study it. We did it, boys. All right, back to the snow map. Oh, they're both German engineers. Okay, okay. Good to know, good to know. Made a mess. Oh, come on. This is grounded. All right, Cyberdyne, we need you to move outside. All right, we're gonna move you to here. And you're going to drop your pee water on the ground. There we go. Look at that unitard, dude. 41%? That's not bad. Alright, so undock suit. We're going to make this Cyberdyne suit. Talking about making messes right on time. Hey, man. Hey. You guys cursed us, man. We shouldn't have made a mess. Why is he still celebrating? All 
All right, we gotta deliver a suit. All right, so wait. Soiled suit is no longer a thing, right? Okay, no, it's not. So we go back and we have Spellmore. He needs better breathing. So let's change crew. We're going to remove Cyberdyne, hit crew, and then we're going to go into here. And we're going to undock a suit. And we're going to give that to Spellmore so that he could actually be okay. Cyberdyne was so excited he wet himself, dude, man. I don't know how he does that. But hey, it happens sometimes. So this is going to be Spellmore. And we'll deliver a suit. Actually. Nice. No longer crew. Alright, so he has a little bit of pop deer drums, which is fine. We're going to be mining out a little bit of the area here. So that we can make our reactor in the area. Hopefully that should be okay. And then I do need to mine out some of that. And then on this area. So... It's the middle tile that I need to mine out. The middle tile. So we're going to have our coal gens right here. So another thing we're going to need is to build tiles. So that we could stop the ice from melting if it gets too hot and then flooding my area. Or creating an opening so that the gases leave out and then we're in a vacuum and we overheat and break ourselves. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with that. All right, we're going to allow Cyberdyne in. Uh, they're just chatting it up. What a guy, dude. Y'all see this guy? He's supposed to be working. And he, he chose he chose that he he's not going to be working. What a rude guy. All right, so I need this tile gone. And then I am going to need this tile removed. Okay, so the joint plate needs to be like that, but I can't do that, right? Oh, it's because of the drywall? Interesting. So that's probably how I'm going to want it. And then a reflector goes here. That's going to be powerless, so I think that's going to be fine. And then we'll have the reactor at the bottom. Uh, before we mine this out, let me remove these two tiles. Alright, so we gotta mine, we gotta build, we gotta mine out some more. Spell more sleeping, feels bad, man. Let's remove some of these as well. Wait, that's Spellmore. The other guy's sleeping now. Okay, okay. Alright, we could mine this out then. Alright, so how tall is the research reactor? Oh, dude, this guy's sleeping outside. The ultimate rude dupe. Sleeping outside for no reason. Alright, we gotta continue mining this out though. Alright, so back home. This is how tall? Six tiles. Cool, cool. So we need seven. And before we do that, we're going to build the generators up top. So it's going to be this, this. One, two, three, four. Nice. So we'll build that first. 
and then we'll build the coal gens right now, and then we'll try to attach the power. We could mine these tiles now, as they would melt anyways. Alright, so... Let's try to do it like that. Melt this. Get rid of that snow, that's fine. Oh! Damn it, guys! I messed up. <laughs> I messed up. I forgot to do something. You know what I forgot to do, guys? I forgot to do something important. Ah, oh, man. I forgot to bring a geranium. <laughs> I forgot to bring uranium. Uh, so we're no longer going to need the artifact rocket. So we get rid of this. This is a nice rocket, though. So I don't want to break the inside. So we we'll remove the artifact transport module. Uh, there's no need for power here. So I could probably remove the battery as well. How are we generating power? How This actually can't generate power, yet my battery is charged. That's kind of impressive. <laughs> That's really impressive, man. Holy crap. I don't know how that works, but it's working. We got to remove that, though. And then once we're done with that, we could start just using this as a uh, transport rocket. Just release some uh, uranium and it should be okay. So we'll be on a second trip. The one thing about this is, I will need to have uranium on this uh, tile. It shouldn't be uh, not too bad. Alright, so we're building that still. Oh, you're catching your breath now? Uh, Styberdine's already getting into a new... So that's going to be crew. So this is going to be an undock suit. Come on. We gotta swap the suits, boys. Dude, nine. I mean, uh, four percent, dude. Holy crap. Suits worn out. You're not trapped. You're okay. Oh, you're having issues as well. Feels bad. Alright, so change crew. Undock suit. And then we have the homie pop up right here. Come on, Spellmore. Unequipped. And give it the Spellmore. Deliver, deliver. No longer crew based. This is non grounded. Okay. We're filling out the water. Good stuff, good stuff. We need the joint plate. Does that mean I can't reach the plastic? We grab that. No, we have it. We have it. And the other one's right there. Nice. Does the engine charge while it's flying? No. This is not like the other rockets. Uh, the petroleum engine does. But the Radbolt engine does not. I used to have a solar panel on there. But I removed it so that we could travel faster. So what I think happened was that I... Uh, basically made it so that... We had enough power on it, and since we weren't using the power, the power that we lost was decay. So it's decayed for a while, and it's not fully decayed yet. <laughs> so it's basically, it should look like this with the one solar panel. But because we're not really utilizing the power on the rocket, it's just decaying slowly. It's kind of funny, man. It's taking a long time. Alright, so... I do want to move the ladder to over here. And then we'll remove everything from this. And then this is going to be heavy watt. So, bam, 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 bam. 
we'll build that out and then have this come straight across. I should have enough iron for that. All right, so we have the first ladder built. We're going to remove the other ladders. And then one, two, three, four. We'll use this setup. All right, so we'll have coal. Oh, I didn't bring coal either. I mean, that's good. I don't want this running yet. Now, I believe the sweeper was something like this, right? Oh, that would have been like that. Okay. Let me change that to a mesh tile, just in case. And then I could move the coal gen one tile over. And then it's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, potentially. I need to see how much space I actually need for the sweeper. Because I need to hit the middle tile. Technically, this works. If I do it like this, I don't get the bottom. If I do it like this, I get both. So if I move that, I can move that here. And that's a little bit better. All right, so cancel. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is going to be where the auto sweeper is going to be. We, I guess we remove this tile and put a ladder here. So that does mean I have to do this. And it does mean I have to remove that as well. Alright, so that's already built. Convenient. Uh, I guess we should have this connected. And then we're going to use all this the correct direction. I don't know if they're able to collide. <laughs> I'm actually not sure. But we'll use different values. Uh... Alright, so we're picking out random prime values that I think are prime numbers. And since prime numbers are not divisible by anything other than one in itself, it shouldn't ever collide. But, you know, we got to see if that's the case. Yeah, so this is fine. And then I do want to mine some of the pea water. And he's stuck. So I don't want this to flood accidentally if possible. That's a bad thing, right? I don't want it to flood. And I believe this is going to be my tile for my storage bin, right? We should only need four. I don't think there's much needed. They're out of oxygen again? Oh man, come on. <laughs> we already need to swap suits again, dude. Alright, so that's going to be for coal once we have it. We're going to have this there. 
the build design should be honestly just straightforward like this. And I probably mine this out. Just because it melts, right? It makes a lot of sense. So we'll wait for that. And then... This is about ready. Automation is in. And then right here is six tiles. Okay, so I see where we need to go to. So this is good. Get rid of that. We're going to need to mine this, this, that. And then we're going to want to mine this. And then this is going to be the tile that the reactor is going to sit on. Outside of that, we need to make sure this doesn't flood us. So we'll probably have to build some ladders to seal this up on the side. And then as long as we have gas... Or, uh, well, actually, no, the steam should be fine. It's not going to melt anything, though. Technically, the Rad Bull generators might be uh, susceptible to the carbon dioxide. Maybe we want to release some of the oxygen pockets. Alright, so... They're both holding their breath, right? Yeah, so we'll swap both of them right now. Hey, got him! FPC TV coming in with the 11 months. Thanks so much, FPC. I see you over there. Welcome back to the city. Enjoy the emotes, D20 dice, ad free viewing. Don't forget that legit sub badge. Thank you so much for the support, though. FPC, how you doing today? How was the Tuesdays, my dude? Alright, we're doing good. We're doing good. Was napping. Nice. Nice, nice. Just woke up to sub. Yo, man, appreciate that. Thank you so much for the love, man. I'm not gonna lie, man. Is it weird that I feel like... I tried not to nap. Like, I do everything in my ability to not nap. I could be tired... I, I could be, you know, lacking sleep. But for whatever reason, when I was little, I had the thing where I would nap. And then when I woke up, you know, and, you know, I continue on, on about my day, I couldn't sleep at nighttime. So, you know, I didn't take that as, oh, that's bad. I shouldn't be napping anymore. But it was like, because of that, I was like, I didn't like not being able to fall asleep. To this day, I still can't fall asleep at night sometimes, and it might be just, you know, me. But, yeah, man, because of that, I never liked napping. Feels weird. Don't know if that's a uh, good or bad thing. Hope y'all doing good. We doing all right, man. About to beat the game, FPC. Trying to set up our end game reactor. Breach the tear. And then uh, we should be having an easy time. We are doing the last objective right now as well. Which is, uh, you know going to be breaching the tear. We just finished the artifact one just right now. With the cosmic archaeology. Oh, gold. Sweet, sweet gold. I'll take it. So right now we're going to be doing the tear. I think it's going to be easy time, but who knows? Yeah, that's six tile. So we would mine here. And then this would be airflow. Or a mesh tile. And then we would have these tiles here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, let's do that and do it like this. So that the items don't go on top of the tiles. That gold is prime gold I just sent. Appreciate you, FPC. I didn't have any gold before that. So there was an option for us to make something called Oxalite Refinery. But this requires gold. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, it's refined gold. I thought it was gold amalgam. Still good, though. Still good. I think 5 uh, milligrams of melatonin when I can't sleep at night, and I'm out like a light in 20 minutes. I see a face for radio. I tried that. It seems to not do anything. Maybe it does. Maybe I just don't notice it. But I take 10 milligram melatonin. <laughs> and it's like... Not that I don't trust it or anything like that. It's it's more so that, man, I don't know why. It, it doesn't affect me that much. Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow, hope you're having the nice days. That would put me into a coma. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I don't process it. 
Maybe it's like I've taken it for so long that because I've been taking melatonin for a couple years now. Maybe my body's built up a tolerance. Who knows? I really don't know why. I just know that it's it's a thing. Oh, and I need to have a smart battery, right? I forget about that. Uh, we could do that right here, I guess. So that we don't burn the coal. I do drink coffee. I drink coffee and tea. So I overload on caffeine, dude. I have a lot. If that's the problem, and you told me that's the only thing if I cut it, I'd be able to go to sleep now. I'd believe it, but I probably wouldn't stop drinking coffee and tea. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sipping on tea right now. I had coffee in the morning. That's how I stay hydrated, actually. The tea, I love the tea flavor. Right? It just tastes amazing. I could drink water, too, but I, I prefer tea if I can. Stop caffeine after lunch. Good day so far. Still at work though. Gotcha, gotcha, Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow. I went cold turkey on caffeine 10 years ago. Had for medical reasons, but I switched to herbal tea. No regrets. Hmm. Is that like the Yerba Mate? Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow? Is that is that like the type of herbal tea you would drink? I have my last cup of coffee around 11 a.m. Ah, right before the, the afternoon, huh? Tea is caffeine, which will keep you awake as well. It's true. This is 100% true. I know that. But I don't know, man. I feel like tea is just so delicious. I can't I can't stop it, dude. I like fruit blends. Oh, I see you over there. If you like fruit blends and you want to save a little bit of money, you could buy, like, dried fruit. And that's actually what they use in the teas, I believe. If you change to Ruibos tea, it is without caffeine. I guess I have to try it because one of the things I like about tea is the flavor. And I find that the teas that I enjoy the flavor of tend to be caffeinated. It tends to be caffeinated. Not that I like the caffeine taste or anything like that. It just happens to be caffeinated is the, is the way I could describe it. They make some nighttime tea blends that are good. I heard about that. Uh, what is it called? Sleepy tea? I, I don't believe it. Because the thing about it is that... As an adult, I've kind of gotten used to waking up in the middle of the night. And then going to pee. You know? Like it's like 3, 4 in the morning. I gotta pee. I'm like, alright, just wake up, pee, go back to bed. And it's like, I'm used to it now. But it's like, it's it's when you're young, you're kind of taught to not drink that much water or fluids in general at nighttime. So that you don't, you know, have to wake up in the middle of the night to pee. But I wonder, is that technically more beneficial to drink water at night so that your body stays hydrated? Because isn't that one of the, the downsides of summer? It's warm slash hot and your body kind of uh, gets hydrated or dehydrated. And then if you don't drink water at night, you know, you're going to uh, have a lot of dehydration. Is that a thing? So it's like the, the concept of like sleepy tea right before bed feels weird to me. Because it's like, you, you try not to drink fluids in general, right? Depends on how much you sweat. I sweat like a beast, man. I sweat nonstop. Let me, got, let me tell you the story of... Uh, when, when, when I first had hot Cheetos. You guys know what hot Cheetos are, right? Y'all don't need me to tell you guys. Y'all know what hot Cheetos is, right? So hot Cheetos. Y'all know about that. Um, the first time I had it, I broke out its sweat. Because it was too spicy. Now the thing is, is that I enjoyed it. It wasn't like it was too spicy that I never wanted to eat it again. It was more so along the lines of, oh man, I'm busting a sweat. 
And, you know, I didn't mind it at all. So I would snack on it from time to time. The thing is, is that, dude, I sweat. So I couldn't have it at school. Because I would just sweat so much. And um, one time, the homie was, uh, he got hot fries. And he's like, yo, legit, you got to try this. This is better than hot Cheetos. So he gave me some hot fries. I was like, oh, man, I can't stop eating this for some reason. The hot fries are basically like potato sticks that have like the hot Cheetos powder on top. Oh, my God. Delicious. You give me some of that with some beer. I just can't stop. I just I just eat the whole bag. So he gave me some. I was like, oh, this is delicious. Can I have some? He's like, yeah, man. Help yourself. I was like, okay, cool. So I started eating it and I was busting a sweat. They, they made fun of me. Because I was wearing a t-shirt, right? I was wearing a white t-shirt. And they said that... Well, it wasn't an L. But they said that it looked like the letter L on my back. From sweating. Right? And it wasn't the letter L. I'm saying that for me telling the story to you guys. But... Um, it was the same letter as my first name in real life. Not my, uh, you know, too legit city. And they're like, oh man, look at that. He's sweating so hard. His, his logo is coming out on his, on his uh, white t-shirt. And it was like the reverse Superman. Because you know Superman has the S on his chest. I had the letter of my first name on my back from sweating so hard. <laughs> it was bad, dude. Friends were making fun of me the entire day. Oh man. They don't think it'd be like it is, dude. But it do. And it really do be like that sometimes. Now, fast forward, like, uh, man, I don't even know. I think it's like 12 years, 10 years. I got to college. My first roommate I roomed with had an issue where he sweats a lot on his back. And he said that he actually had to buy back deodorant to stop the perspiration. And I was like, that doesn't exist, man. That's got to be a sham. He was like, no, no, man. I'm buying this deodorant for my back to stop from sweating. I was like, that's got to be a meme. <laughs> and, and he did it. I don't think it helped. This motherfucker still sweats from his back all day, every day. I'm sweating right now. The only exercise I've done in the last hour is type. Yo, man, it happens. Face for radio. It's hot, man. It's not your fault. It's just hot. There's a gland behind your ear that controls that, and during my last surgery, they nicked it. And now, every time I eat hot stuff, I sweat. Oh, wow. So, so you guys know how my story right now with the hot Cheetos was? I had a worse story where I went to eat uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. So, it's Buffalo Wings, hot wings with the friends to watch, uh, you know, the sports. And we got some wings. And, yo, man... I was, I looked like I got out of the pool. The waiter came out. I was like, hey, man, you need a towel? <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> this motherfucker got me a towel from the back. I was wiping my head down. Like, I just got out of the shower, man. Like, I was just Olympic diving. Hair is all wet, man. I got sweat all over the collar of my shirt. It was, it was bad. Like, man. And ever since that day, man, I try not to eat spicy food when I go out. It's only at home now. Dude, you ate a habanero burger. I had buffalo wings. It's not even that spicy. <laughs> it wasn't even that spicy. I just, I just react pretty bad to it. Is that an allergy? Is that considered an allergy? If I oversweat from consuming something, is that considered an allergy? All right. Looks like we're catching our breath still, right? All right, Cyberdyne, unequipped. Cyberdyne gets a new suit. Let's go. Dude, they should really warn some people on the wing flavors. Dude, man. They they have this catalog on the menu that goes like, oh, if you're, uh, you know, they have spice levels. Oh, this is like eating one jalapeno. This is like putting sriracha on your instant ramen. You know, they actually have that. But I'm not going to lie, man. I, I feel like I'm kind of a masochist when it comes to spicy food. I sweat. It looks like I'm dying. But man, oh man, will I say that it's delicious. <laughs> Actually, it is delicious, man. I don't know how to describe it. It's just good, man. I'm not even mad. All 
Alright, spell more. We're gonna give you a new one. Two worn suits, and we have four more inside. I put jalapenos in my chicken alfredo, it makes it so good. Honestly, adding chili to a lot of dishes, I feel like it's underrated. I feel like when you add chili to dishes, man, you could potentially like change it up completely, and it makes it really good. Chili Puzz? Yo, I've never heard of that FRD dot. Is that a thing? I feel like that would be on, um... Uh... There's a guy called Chili Klaus on the YouTubes. And... I feel like he would have had something with that. <laughs> if it is, I need to watch that, though. There's this place in town where I went to college and had release form wings where you actually had to sign a form saying they weren't liable for anything that happened to you. Oh, God, man. Yo, Face Radio knows the place. <laughs> dude, in the 40 guys went to college together, man. Small world, dude. Harvey's wash bangers. Yep, that's it. <laughs> dude. Long lost homies, dude. I see you guys over there. Small world. It's a small world after all. I see you guys over there, man. Oops. So, so have you guys had those wings? I understand the release form. That's a thing. But have you guys had it? Yeah, it's a form of feeling that you get from eating hot chilies. It's like you're getting high from another substance, but it's from the chilies, huh? Oh, that's insane. Is it kind of like a runner's high? Where if you run for a long time, you get this feeling like you're on a substance, but you're just running. It's, it's like that. I haven't had them, but a friend did. Were you there to witness it, Cthulhu? <laughs> Were you there to witness him eating? He was struggling. Oh, man. Dude. The spiciest thing I've had was when the uh, spicy ramen challenge came out. If you guys are familiar with that. When that was a thing, my uh, ex-girlfriend told me to try it. Even though she knows about me overly sweating. And I was like, yeah, I'll try. Why not? Yo, man, that shit ruined me, dude. Holy crap. The the spicy instant ramen challenge, the Korean spicy noodles. Oh, God, dude. That shit tore me up like no other. It was impressive how spicy it was, to be honest. P. Jassy over there. You got some Thai salad. Is it supposed to be very spicy? I watched a coworker eat them. I wanted no part of it. <laughs> See, the thing with the spice challenges is that they're usually over the top spiciness, right? And I get that. I just wish they actually tasted good. That's like the only thing I had against it. Oh, you got stuck. All right, Cyberdyne, you're going down to here. Now you're mining this tile and you're mining that tile. All right, now we can mine that. We'll mine this. We'll mine that. Oh, it's granite. Can you mine granite, Cyberdyne? He cannot. Spell more? Spell more can. Okay, cool. Spicy as hell, I believe it. Spice is real, dude. Oh, nice oxygen up top. That's what I actually want. I want to release a little bit more if possible. Sadly, we don't have buffalo wings here. We have really hot wings called uh, kamikaze wings. And they're really hot. Yo, man. I've heard of uh, that as a sushi roll. And it was supposed to be like really spicy. I think it has like wasabi in it or something. But I see you guys over there. I feel like buffalo wing sauce is... Uh, is that actually a American concoction? Is that something we as Americans made? 
I mean, it makes sense. 